A new week has begun and I am going over yesterday's race experience and having lots of thoughts and uh, wondering what the next steps are. Clearly, I need to uh, improve my leg strength. I uh, also need to work probably on core stability so that I can hold my technique together longer. So toes to bar is going to become more of a feature. Uh, also, maybe I should hire someone to wax my skis for the next big event. <laughs> I'm concerned that the broken thumb set me back significantly and did so enough that it may not be worth it for me to go to the World Championships. Is it worth the investment to go there if I'm not ready to compete at that level? So lots to think about this week. But I like a game, so I'm going to take it on and see what I can do. See if I can turn this around. I'm starting off the week with some great news. I now have a signed lease with the new owner of this building and they're not going to raise my rent for the first year. And then year number two, they're only going to raise it 4%, which would have been how much it was raised with the previous owner. So I get to stay in my studio. So you'll be getting a tour soon and my anxiety levels are going to go down and I can get back into some projects that I've been putting off because I wasn't sure if I was going to have to leave. So great news. Going in for what I assume is my last occupational therapy appointment. I skied a little more than the race distance yesterday. Working on technique, trying to be powerful but calm. And I wasn't that much slower than the race, and I was using a lot less effort. So maybe all is not lost. One of the projects that I'm really pumped about is designing and building a slide board, which is a dry land training tool for speed skaters. So dry land training means off ice or off snow. So cross-country skiers will roller ski. Uh, speed skaters will often rollerblade, inline skate, or slide board. And there are a lot of great videos on YouTube on how to build a slide board. So I'm going to create my own version so that I can really work on my legs because I've gotten super strong with my arm engagement when I'm out there skiing. But what I'm realizing is that I'm leaving my biggest muscles out of the equation. And that's one of the things that's slowing me down. Uh, you're not supposed to just power your way through with arms. You really got to have a strong leg drive. So I want to uh, create the slide board, which I'll have over here in front of the TV where the elliptical is. And uh, I can do some great leg workouts while I watch races and movies and such. And uh, that's exciting. I don't design things from a plan. I'm not going to follow anybody's video. What I'm going to do is think about the materials. I'm going to test them out. So I'm going to go to Home Depot and I'm going to touch a lot of the materials that they have and see which uh, material has the the most resilient finish. I don't want it to wear out or rub thin and also which material has the least amount of friction. And then I'm going to keep iterating or modifying what I'm making as I go to try to decrease the cost and also improve the quality. Uh, so I'll show you the process and show you what um, what ends up being created. I always love this type of uh, engagement, although my studio gets messy when I'm working on a project because it it's not quick because I don't follow a recipe. Um, I'm brainstorming for days, sometimes weeks, and just trying lots of different stuff and walking around stores, just looking at things, touching things, holding things, imagining things and suddenly something will just jump out at me. And uh, I love that process, but it takes a while and my studio is in a state of disrepair while it's going on. So after I finish this project and get my studio back in order, I'll give you a tour. Dinner is salad, Japanese sweet potatoes, and then an hour or two from now, I'll have a protein smoothie. What's this? Hmm? What's this? What can it be? Oh, it's a Chabasaurus Rex. Oh, it's a Chabasaurus. Another inch and a half to two inches of snow. 
So it's gonna be a 30 to 40 minute shoveling job. And then I gotta get some wood. And then I head to work. I'm gonna do some more wood hauling than I usually would because I gotta work on leg strength. And I'll probably increase the size of the sled load that I'm dragging. That's probably 20 to 30% more than usual. Looks like I've got a headlight out. Gotta go pick up a bulb and change that. Today's PT exercise is to develop strength in my wrist to be able to turn a jar lid, which I still struggle to do. So I'm taking the blue putty, which is the strong putty, the strongest that they have at the center. I'm gonna mush it out a bit. Not totally flat. All right. And then I'm gonna take the lid, press it in, and twist. As I twist, I press it in. And this is pretty tough, and you really gotta make sure that you're using the injured finger, and not just using the other ones. And then backwards. Oh, this is good. It really burns. Yow! That one especially really stretches out the tendons and ligaments in my thumb. And then when you get close to the bottom, you pop it off and redo it on the other side. So I'll be doing this every other day in addition to the find the bead and the donuts and the pinching and the other exercises that I do. Such a beautiful day for skiing. Cold. My mouth is frozen. My toes are chilly, but it's so pretty. Just finished up a board meeting. I sit on the board of the Bennington Area Trail System, otherwise known as BATS. Uh, it's in the bike shop across the parking lot from my studio. Anyway, the mansion property where we have our trails on Mount Anthony here in Bennington, uh, it's up for sale and we may lose access to our trail network, which would be a real bummer. So we're scrambling to try to figure out how to keep access if uh, a new owner wants to squeeze us out. So, not, uh, not a very fun meeting. Getting back into strength post-race and I'm trying something new with my pulling. I'm strapping a resistance band around my waist so I can lean forward. And it makes the angle of attack much more like actually skiing. I really like it. I'm starting the day with a little throat challenge, which is new for me. I haven't had any kind of sickness uh, since 2019. So even though it's fun to have a more resonant voice, I'm not excited about the fact that I have a sore throat. So I've got to get a COVID test and uh, take it a little bit easier. It's pretty cold today uh, in the single digits Fahrenheit. So um, gentle as I go. So I'm gonna build a slide board, which is something that speed skaters and hockey players train on. So I'll show you what that looks like and the materials. So I went to Home Depot and bought a four by eight, four feet by eight feet sheet of OSB, which is this stuff right here. It's like a particle board. Then I got a four by eight sheet of melanine, which is like a whiteboard, and they cut it for me. So Home Depot will cut I think they give you three cuts for free, so I just needed two. So this is seven feet long, so I had a foot cut off the edge, and it's two feet wide, so half of the total board, which would be up to there. So I have two of these, uh, two feet by seven feet, and I did the same thing with the melanine. Um, so I have two, so I could make another and use that at home. So this one will be at the studio, and then I may bring another one home, and then I got a yoga mat at Goodwill, for $3.99, which is going to be under, I'm gonna glue it to the bottom of the OBX 
so that it doesn't slide on the floor, so it'll be grippy. So I'm going to glue yoga mat to the bottom of the OBX, then I'm going to glue the melanine to the top of the OBX so it's gonna be nice and firm, rigid, because this stuff is really flexible, really thin. So this is gonna give it some rigidity. So I put standard wood glue on top of the OBX and then laid the melanine on top of it and then weighted it down because the melanine uh, buckles and you wanna make sure that you get uh, a secure adhesion throughout. So I used a lot of my weights and my 25 pound feed bag. So this is a 25 pound bag of cracked corn, which I put in a thick plastic bag covered in Dollar Tree duct tape. Then I got at Dollar Tree uh, a dog toy, which had two handles. I disconnected them and then had them looped into this through the duct tape. So it's really securely on there. So I've got a 25 pound bag that I can do all kinds of exercises with. I carry this up and down the stairs. I can do squats with it. I can throw it around. I can drop it on my foot and I don't get hurt. So it's much better than a kettlebell. And I think the bag itself was maybe $6. The handles were $1.25 total. The duct tape, I think, was two rolls, so there's $2.50. Uh, so a super cheap, versatile weight that I can do lots with. Uh, and I'm not going to break the floor or break my feet. So I got a kneeling pad at Dollar Tree, which is foam. And it looks like it's about... I don't know, maybe 14, 16 inches long. I'm gonna cut it in half, and that's gonna serve as the bumper and push off on either side of the slide board. Then I got some quarter inch diameter washers. The hole is a quarter of an inch. I think it's maybe inch and a quarter, inch and a half on the outside. So I'm gonna take on each of these halves, I'm going to glue and bolt, I got some quarter inch bolts with um, a beveled edge, and they're an inch long. I got those at Home Depot. This was Dollar Tree. Uh, these were like 19 cents a piece. These were, I think, $1.38 for the whole package. Uh, and this is a dollar and a quarter. So I'm gonna cut it in half, glue it, and then bolt it to the board, which I think the glue should be dry by now. The yoga mat that I got at Goodwill is a little less than six feet long and the slide board is seven feet. So I'm gonna split the difference and go six foot four for the slide board. So the yoga mat won't quite cover it, but that's okay. I'll leave like two inches on either side uh, underneath. So I just put down some wood glue on top of the yoga mat and I'm gonna put the slide board on top of it and then add some weights and hopefully it sticks. The yoga mat is evenly distributed over the slide board, flattened out and weighted down. I cut the kneeling pads and super glued them to the whiteboard and then I will put the bolts in when the glue is dry. Fun climb to the top of the mountain. And fantastic reward. So pretty up here. In the distance, that's Stratton Mountain, about 20 miles as the crow flies. And that's where the Stratton Mountain School and the SMS T2 team is. With Jesse Diggins, Ben Ogden, you can see where some of the best skiers in the world train. Negative. What? What you doing, Fox? Hmm? What you doing? Another morning, another load of wood. Finished up my morning chores on the farm and now I'm headed into town, stopping at the store to get some oranges. You may hear that my voice is a little bit deeper than usual. Uh, I think I may have picked something up at the funeral in New Jersey on Friday. Um, I've been having a sore throat a little bit uh, most mornings.
since, but that can be normal in the winter because the air is so dry in the house due to the wood heat. Um, although I don't sleep with heat in my apartment, it's uh, whatever the temperature is outside. <laughs> Uh, except on very cold nights. Anyway, I'm gonna get some oranges and uh, do a little vitamin C. I'm listening to a new book called The Business of Belonging, which uh, I'm a couple hours in and it's uninteresting. I get it, community is important and your business should work to develop community, but he could have said that in five minutes. Uh, the rest of the book is just in my mind. Uh, not that useful going over examples of how people have used community and okay it works but I just want to get down and, and do it tell me what works and then I'll experiment with it when I get to the studio it is organization time I tore apart my storage area yesterday and didn't put it back together so I'm gonna walk in and be very gentle as I wade through the sea of objects that will greet me It is time for my first official slide board workout. So I've got some slippers, which I got on clearance, just basic slippers, that are covered in Dollar Tree women's stockings that I snipped, they were longer. They're not quite as slippery as Lycra, but it's hard to find Lycra socks and I can't sew. And these slip well enough. So you bunch them up, or at least this is the strategy I'm going with, put the slipper on, pull the stockings up a little bit. Same with the other foot. And even though Lycra is slipperier, that can be a little dangerous too. Uh, I want to slide, but I don't want to fall down. So we put those on and it's plenty slippery on the melanin. All right. And I'm not going for perfect form because I'm not a speed skater. So what I'm doing is just trying to get a good quad workout and work on my push off. Work on getting my leg underneath me and work on pushing off to full extension. So my glutes are engaged and my quad is, or my lower leg is fully extended. And that's what it sort of looks like and I'll modify how I do it. I may put my hands behind me like a speed skater. I may get even lower like a speed skater and stay in an engaged quad state the whole time. I can still push off so my glute is extended if I stay low. I don't know. I could pole. I could pretend that I'm on skis, working my timing. I'm not sure yet how I'll use it, but I can already feel that it's a good burn. And my breathing is changing, so it's getting my heart and lungs engaged in a way that the elliptical does not. Uh, even though my legs are burning the entire time on the elliptical, I don't get my heart rate over 100 ever. I can already feel my heart rate is probably in the mid-130s. Slightly difficult to talk. Okay, slideboard workout. It's a chilly one today, and as you can hear, my throat slash upper respiratory infection is still hanging on. Um, yeah, so we're gonna take it indoors today. It's actually not bad when you're dressed. Um, the wind chill is what everybody's talking about. It's gonna be minus 30 Fahrenheit with the wind chill, but if you're dressed, it's really not a huge issue, but because I have uh, an infection, I don't want to put my body under any more stress outside. So I'm uh, going to be on indoor machines today. It is time for a messy studio tour. 
I'm not going to show you the whole studio uh, because I'll probably break my neck trying to climb over things. But I am completely upturning, upending uh, the entire studio to simplify it, to streamline it, because I have a lot of items that I have collected uh, for projects that I was working on. And I realized that many of these projects have been completed, but the raw potential materials for those projects are still here. And there are other projects that I have abandoned. I decided I didn't want to go in that direction. And those materials are still here. And so I've had this overwhelming storage area behind that wall. And I decided I don't want that anymore. It doesn't feel good. Um, especially now that I put my dip machine in there and my... Nordic Flex weight machine is in there and my spin bike I've decided is going to live in there so I don't have to keep rolling it out here. It's inconvenient and it makes me not use it. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna just go minimal here or at least my version of minimal. Anyway, everything is everywhere because what was in storage is now in greater circulation so that I can work in there. So let's show you what uh, I'm currently looking at because I'm going to practice my gentle tiny steps to get through this because if I were to look at it and think oh my god I have to put all this away and I don't know where it goes I wouldn't take a step so here we go we'll start over here this is the other half of my slide board materials which obviously I don't need here uh, I don't need two slide boards so if somebody wants a slide board I've got some raw materials I've got some lighting and camera equipment, plus a bunch of receipts that I'm trying to organize. They were in this cabinet, uh, and I'm trying to get rid of a lot of stuff, more stuff to get rid of. Camera equipment that needs to be organized, containers, a big bin, some clothing that needs to figure out where it goes because I have too much here, magazines I need to go through. Um, that I've been collecting for years that I pull articles out of. A mini treadmill, which I love because it's manual, but it's got to go bye-bye. Um, all this was on my storage shelves, I'm figuring out how to consolidate or get rid of materials that I don't need. Old Christmas lights that I tried all of them and they don't work, getting rid of those little parts and pieces. Um, the ladder that I found, I gotta find a home for that. All this stuff that I've been pulling out. Um, so it does not feel good in here right now. <laughs> but this is uh, what it takes in order to manage this, my Nerf gun collection. This is a, a form of meditation for me. I love shooting Nerf guns. Uh, it's better than knife throwing. I don't do that in the studio. The spin bike. Um, and I gotta set my TV up in here uh, and just all of these shelves, most of this stuff needs to go bye-bye or be better organized, all the wood. Um, I collect pallet wood that I find and I'm gonna be storing it in those large red and green bins you may see in the bottom. Anyway, so this is what I'm walking into today. And uh, I will find a way through. And there's the, the new slide board, which I can't use right now because the floor is occupied. So, and here's my desk, which also has a ton of new stuff on it as I try to figure out what to do there. And I've got to take another COVID test to make sure that I don't have COVID. Oh, there I am. Hello. I spent the day organizing the studio, tearing it apart, putting it back together, mostly tearing it apart. Um, some elliptical, some polling machines, some dips, some knees to bar, and uh, it's about 15 below zero right now, and uh, it's gonna go down to 20 below tonight, Fahrenheit. Um, so I'm gonna head home and bundle up. Oh, mama in a box. There are birds. Wow. I'd love to see the physiology of a bird and how they can withstand that kind of temperature. 
The skinny little feet. How do they not freeze? Somebody took my dog leashes off, which means that I've got to touch metal to skin, oh, which is not a lot of fun right now. Ah. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, oh, I broke my fingernail. Fingernails are fragile in this temperature. All right, there we go. If you're properly layered up, this temperature is actually not that bad. My face is fine. My hands are fine out of gloves. Um, I'm wearing three jackets, two shirts, two layers on the bottom, and I feel comfortable. So as they say in Sweden, there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothing. The real challenge on a day like this is trying to start the car. up for a while the steering wheel would even work for a bit <laughs> the car has a funny wobble to it because the tires freeze a little bit flat on the bottom because the air shrinks in the cold temperature so tires get a little bit smaller and then they get a tiny flat spot on the bottom so when you drive it's like bo -bo 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 -bo. <laughs> I started a new book on the way in called The Mask of Sanity, about psychopathy, but it was written in the 1940s, so psychopathy had a different definition back then. Psyche, which means mind, and pathos, which means suffering, uh, a suffering mind. Uh, now psychopathy is a, a different categorization. Uh, it's more about antisocial personality disorder. So I'm curious to see how uh, people framed mental illness 80 years ago. Everybody else's heaters are running, producing exhaust, and mine has white above it. And it's not running. I wonder if it froze. I may have no heat. It's warmish in here. I think it's just that I have the thermostat set to 50 degrees, so it probably hasn't been on in a while. And uh, the exhaust probably froze to the side of the building. But uh, I think we're good to go. I'm gonna turn it on just to do a test. Thermostat is in my storage area, which is now becoming a new gym. Let's turn it up from 50. And there it is. Yay! I got a lot of work to do in here today. Trying to really simplify. I did this wall yesterday. Um, and got an area for my spin bike, put my old TV up so I can spin in here. Um, organizing shoes and stuff. It uh, feels good to have space. I can't get the internet to work in the studio today. I don't know if the modem froze or what's going on because I keep it in the window. But I'm um, recognizing how fragile my experience is without an internet connection. So I'm quickly putting myself into physical activity because uh, I like to check email and respond to client messages when I get here in the morning, but I can't do that. So there's this sense of anxiety. Anyway, yeah, it gives me more time to work on studio organization and just to reflect on the addiction that many of us if not all of us have to powerful internet connection who are we without that i spent a good half of my life without an internet connection and i was fine but now it's like oh no i'm stuck here in the world <laughs> You know it's cold when you drop your latte and it's already frozen solid. It doesn't even spill. <laughs> Feeling pretty draggy this morning. So I'm going to take it extra slow, extra gentle, and we'll see what happens.
the week has finally come to an end. <laughs> I had a lot of challenging moments this week as I try to redo the studio now that I know I will get to stay. A lot of projects that I've been putting off regarding organization uh, are back on the board and I've been working hard to tackle that, making progress, but it's, uh, it's hard to be in a state of disarray and chaos because this is my space to be grounded. So I come in here and I just got to immediately get to work to move the organization forward. Anyway, um, I'm noticing some changes in my body this week that got triggered by the race last weekend at Craftsbury. Uh, we'll talk about that in the week to come. But my training is also taking a turn and it's not planned. Uh, it's just interesting to me how things are starting to change. Um, yeah, okay. I'm gonna head home and uh, grab some food and go to bed early. See you next week.